Uh, I am with uh, Alex Hinsberg, who is the founder and CEO of Transway. Hi, Alex. Hey, good. Thank you for having me. Uh, I would like to know firsthand uh, the background of uh, Alex before deciding to become an entrepreneur. So, um, my background is I, um, I spent a lot of time from Mallorca in Spain, uh, grew up in a travel family. Um, but previous to starting at Fast Bay Hotels almost eight years ago, uh, I was a hotel buyer in my 20s for Thomas Cook. Um, I spent some time, I was commercial director for the Apodo Group uh, based in London. I then spent uh, four amazing years at Expedia where uh, I was responsible for hotel, global hotel chains out of Europe, as well as also running uh, with one of the marketing directors for the online channels uh, in Europe, I had MetaSearch, Display and Mobile and those sort of things. I spent some time at Locals Travel Group, uh, where I reached the COO. Um, and then um, I left Locals Travel Group um, about a year and a half before its demise um, and set up Costco Hotel. So i um, always been involved with uh, fairly sizable companies on B2B, Seaside, hotels, a lot of work with Air, obviously, with, with the Kodo. Um, but yeah, I chose, uh, I, I, at some point, your network is great. I think you know an awful lot of people. You can talk them about what you want to do, and you, you have a dream about uh, from all the things you learn. And, and off you go and set up your own business, right? Which is, which is what I've been uh, Literally, it's an amazing background. And uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, contact with the online world. Yeah. So you have uh, understood many uh, distribution patterns, uh, uh, and I guess, that was one of the reasons uh, to create Transway. Do you appreciate what are uh, in the few uh, lines and this is what Transway has? Yeah, so Transway Hotels, um, we started off um, as, a, as a wholesaler, um, very much uh, sourcing hotel inventory and selling it to travel agents and tour operators around the world. Uh, through our journey, we've been fortunate enough to be able to fund uh, a re-platform and be able to in-house and have all of our technology in-house. And today, essentially, we have two focus, right? On the other hand, we have a very successful uh, wholesaling uh, B2B business. Um, but also what we're seeing the most amount of growth is in our platform business. Um, so all the things that we have learned um, providing hotels to tour operators, uh, we're now able to um, essentially put our technology in the hands of our hotel partners and of our distribution partners. Um, and uh, Fast Hotels today really has two two sides to it. Right? One is additional uh, is, the, is a dynamic wholesaling business, um, providing uh, connectivity and service, and payment solutions, and content uh, to uh, to hotels and travel centers. But also, when we've broken down all of those individual items of how we understand the, the flow of, of that transaction, um, uh, we now have hotels that use us, so we can help them distribute places they cannot get to. Uh, we have big global hotel chains to say, how do we get into the German market? Um, we have uh, customers that come to us and say, how do we source vacation rental? Uh, we have customers that say, we don't know how to make payments with virtual credit cards. We have big tour operators that say, how do we update content on a regular basis? Um, so we've got an, a series of um, we've got a series of uh, products now that we're uh, really beginning to uh, also um, put our expertise in the hands of our tech in the hands of people who possibly have quite old tech, legacy tech, but quite interesting businesses. Um, and we're really focused on some of the really big deals, right? So we're interested in connecting global hotel chains to global brands uh, that cannot work together. Um, less focus on the long tail, um, I'm not interested in, I think at, at this stage, um, but the, the, the business is evolving. I think post-pandemic there is uh, a huge amount of technical debt, I think is the word, where an awful lot of businesses are on legacy platforms, don't have the resources, or don't have the time, or possibly have too much debt in their business to go and acquire the resources to make things happen. Um, unfortunately, we're on a very modern, recently built tech stack, um, and we found that there's real mileage and a real opportunity for making our tech available to people. So it seems like you have evolved from a travel company, from a travel tech company providing uh, tech services. Uh, to mention not mainly large clients. Uh, when you were we, we, we don't forget our origins. So obviously both yeah. businesses sit in parallel. Um, but I think um, I think you're right. I think it is an evolution. But we're seeing that everywhere, aren't we? I mean, we've got OTAs who are now B2B partners. 
We've got channel managers that have just bought uh, bed banks. Uh, we've got EMSs and we've got uh, channel managers that now provide meta and advertising and social media services. I think everyone is the, the, the definitions and the clear segmentations of the industry uh, pre pandemic mean nothing. Yeah, no, it doesn't exist. My, my question is uh, in this case, will be related to scalability because if we find one wrong, in most of the cases, you have to customize your solution to your, each of these clients. Is, uh, is this a business model? So, from a scalability, I think it is. I think um, a lot of our a lot of our work is standardized. I think we've built that um, modular nature into what we do, um, and uh, so far, so good is the, is the reality. I think, um, but I think that the key is that you're very that you simplify and you you say this is the solution. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Otherwise, you're right. You can end up um, so cool. We have very limited amount of customization. I would say. Um, but so far, we've got the product right, and people understand what we're buying and how they're buying and how they're working. So, at the end of the day, you say that you have time, a lot of money to not drink on it, but obviously, you have the potential to solve the problem by itself. But it will take more time and more money to do it. And that's only with the possibility of not succeeding in that because of the great advantage that you have. That if our company correct that uh, new solution is working because we've done it for ourselves, correct? I, I look, I think uh, talking, uh, you know, um, over the last few uh, events that I've travel events that I've been to, it feels to me like the industry everybody is now has essentially the same problem. Right? Everyone is signing business development, people are making deals, everyone is getting moving forward, everyone knows where they want to go to. Um, but the implementation timelines and the risk around implementation is now the big issue, right? It used to take, you know, um, I'm sure you know, everyone watching your video, you know, anyone would sign a contract and within 60 days they'd start seeing maybe a hint of revenue, maybe three months, right? Um, implementation timelines across the entire industry now because of the lack of resources, because I think it's a very cautious approach to everything, um, because everyone is focusing on the core. You know, these are all sort of standard, stereotypical answers a lot of people are giving around what they're doing with their strategies. Um, everything's taken. Everything's like, well, can we talk about Q4 rather than Q2? You know, everyone is slowing down. So I think anyone that's providing a faster, ready-made, simpler solution uh, now, now, uh, now is much more interesting. It's, it is absolutely the topic of, uh, of all the travel I've done recently to all the events. Everyone is saying the same thing to me. Our pipeline of signatures is good. Our pipeline of implementation is slow. So, yeah, right? And, 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 you know, I think... This is as simple as, I don't know, take an OTA anywhere in the world. Pre-pandemic, it had five developers. Three were working on the website, and two were working on integrations. Right? Post-pandemic, three of them left and worked to work for an insurance company, or Amazon, or someone like that. They've now got three developers. And they're saying, well, you know what? Let's, three of them work on the website, and we're not doing any more integrations. right? Or we're not doing any more of the, any new stuff. Let's just keep the payment page optimizing, and the home page optimizing, and, and the back office, and the call center module optimizing. So everyone has slightly less resources. Um, and everyone's rather traveling a little bit slower. Everyone knows where they want to go. Everyone wants to do that. So uh, when we come along and say, listen, we have a ready-made solution. This can happen sooner than you think. Um, some people have that build the buy debate. I think that's absolutely fine. But, it, but as an industry, you know, I've been talking to currency people, same problem. Insurance integrations, everyone, people selling ancillary, same problem. Uh, no one's in a mood uh, to, to integrate what's signed. We'll get there, we'll get there, but no, but no. So, um, we think that providing these uh, these services is a really good time to, uh, to do that. I think that's a really interesting thing. We have suffered a situation with some of our participating companies that uh, were supposed to be providing uh, new technology that require on the side of the client uh, uh, implementation that it took so long that at the end, uh, uh, is from some of the struggles to survive because they don't have to actually the financial uh, so what was the strength uh, uh, to uh, be aligned with this uh, slow, long, long, long implementation. And certainly for startups, I think um, salespeople are expensive, particularly the good ones. Anyway. And particularly in this space, uh, no one hires a sales director or a business development director on Monday and gets revenue on Thursday. Right. The timeline before revenue comes in is now even longer than it was before. 
So I think a lot of businesses are going under that moment saying, what do I do? I've been talking to people uh, here today in Barcelona and they're saying, you know, we're moving more people into customer success and then the account management out of the business development teams and into driving more business from existing businesses. Right? That seems to be what everyone is now focusing on because the timelines, and I think the startups who are probably more strapped with cash and more bootstrapped, and, you know, they are, they're, they're, you know, they're saying, you know what, maybe it's better to have a slightly two or three cheaper account managers trying to get more juice out of my existing um, channel, out of my distribution um, or products or, you know, whatever they sell versus um, let's go and do lots of growth because the return on growth is now a, a much larger, uh, longer time frame. We have the four nation legacy technology, and it's uh, funny because uh, years ago we could refer to legacy technology in probably state thinking the development of the city of the 70s or the early years. But the truth is that the online business has about 40 years, yeah, yeah, <laughs> so. Uh, I would like you to elaborate a little bit more about that because not many, many of the OTAs and online companies began to develop technology in the, in the early 2000s. Correct. Yeah. yeah, look, I think um, where we're seeing legacy forms, uh, I would say, in you know, some of the areas, what we're seeing is uh, a lot of the hotel chains and a lot of the uh, traditional businesses can't put more amount of data that's fly around, right? Um, and I think things like 5G are just making it so that emerging markets have more access to uh, faster mobile phones and more searches at two or three.
Travel Think is a non-profit initiative launched and managed by Dr. Javier González Soria in 2006, focused on new trends, innovation, and startups in the travel tech space. Thousands of professionals received the Travel Think in use, where travel top leaders and entrepreneurs shared their insights and reflections.